Welcome back guys, and this clip is actually from the future in relation to all of the other clips in this video, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys were fully aware of a recent development in the SnowRunner space. Now, the Switch store confirmed that there will be a year two pass, and so if any of you guys were not sure about whether or not there was an official confirmation for that, now we have one, and the reason also why I wanted to make sure I put this in this video was because this video was recorded uh, a little bit prior to this clip, so with that being said, once again, I wanted to make sure you guys were aware that the Switch Store confirmed that year two passed on multiple different pieces of DLC content. So now, all we gotta do is wait and see what the developers announce in the future. So, I'm very, very, very excited to see where we go from here. Welcome back, guys, and earlier on, the developers for SnowRunner actually dropped a reveal trailer for everything around Phase 4, and they went into a lot of detail on a lot of different things, and we're going to be talking about that trailer, but we're also going to be talking about some of the other features that are going to be making their way to Phase 4. We're also going to be talking about some of my personal favorites, and if there's anything that you would like to add to the conversation about Phase 4, please do leave all of that stuff in the comment section down below. One thing to also note, if you're not aware of this already, is that the Phase 4 expansion will be making its way to the game along with the Steam version and the Switch version releases on Tuesday the 18th of May. Now, Phase 4 has come a very long way ever since we very first live-streamed the public testing version of Phase 4 on the 2nd of April. Now, thinking back to it and thinking about the fact that we were given access to Phase 4 on PTS back on the 2nd of April is crazy because, you know, as we are here now in May, it's crazy to think about all of the progress that the developers have made. This, for example, the ZIKZ605R, has gone through many changes in performance and especially suspension animation. There was a lot of testing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in terms of how the suspension was set up to perform, and there were even different feedback sessions from members of the community over to the developers in terms of the way not only that the suspension should function, but the way the alignment looked. And that's, that's an insane level to me. They actually changed the degree of the alignment of basically each individual wheel throughout the development cycle of this truck. And if you actually go back and look at early PTS footage of the ZIKZ605R and compare it to the way it looks today, once again, this was recorded on PTS as well, but many, many updates later, you'll actually be able to see that the camber of the wheels is different, which is just incredible to me. Absolutely mind-blowing the attention to detail. Now, to briefly circle back to a different topic, the CAT CT681, which was shown in this latest trailer, I think created a little bit of confusion for people, and it actually created some confusion even in the SnowRunner official Discord, but I just want to urge you guys to remember that as Asorkin said back on April 2nd, the CT681 is a unpaid free truck, but it is also not in Phase 4, so remember to look out for that truck in the future. Now, something that a lot of people seem to have questions about is where do we go after Phase 4? And there have been some people that are saying, oh my god, I'm worried that, you know, it's going to be over after Phase 4 or it's going to be the last phase. No, 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 no. When they talked about it in the trailer, they kept saying, make sure you stay tuned to see what we're going to be doing next, or make sure you stay tuned to see what's coming next. And they've really tried to, I think, make it clear on multiple occasions that Phase 4 is far from where they're going to be ending the support for this game. This game still has a ton of support left in it, and of course, I believe there is a staggering amount of content that we haven't even seen yet. I'm sure that the devs have tons Tons of tricks up their sleeves that we really haven't even been teased with yet. So I'm definitely excited to see where this game goes after Phase 4, but in the meantime, Phase 4 definitely, definitely, definitely gives us a massively in-depth environment to not only work through, but to enjoy with our friends. Now, of course, one of the biggest objectives of Phase 4 is to build and launch the rocket. Now, what's really cool about this trailer is that they showed that daytime shot, and then they also showed a nighttime shot of the rocket launch. And I think that the nighttime shot looks so incredibly detailed. I mean, of course, the daytime shot looks very, very good as well. But that nighttime shot is just so incredible in terms of what it looks like to launch that rocket. And having spent a lot of time in the PTS actually doing some of 
of these different, you know, rocket haul contracts, they're hard to do even with modded trucks. And so if you're doing a completely vanilla playthrough of phase four, I can only imagine how incredibly difficult it is going to be to recover some of those rocket pieces because some of those pieces are all the way on the far end of one map and you have to haul it all the way across one map and then all the way across another map just to get it to the launch site and get it set to go and get it ready and in place and all across that drive you're going to have to support your rig with repair points support it with fuel it's really going to be a massive 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 job and the devs really are not holding anything back here at all in terms of the difficulty department and speaking of the difficulty department, there is also hard mode. Now, hard mode is something I've played around with a little bit in the public test server, which has, of course, been getting some updates over the course of time since I last played it. But I will tell you guys right now that if you find the normal game difficult, I would avoid hard mode. Because hard mode was designed for the people that look at the standard game of SnowRunner and go, eh, too easy. Way they're like, ah, this game's way too easy and it needs to be like 10 times harder. So I attempted hard mode and there is of course a video on my channel of starting a hard mode playthrough and just in doing some of the simple Michigan contracts, it is off the charts levels of difficult. Now, something to also keep in mind about Phase 4 is that if you are a Season Pass owner, obviously you're going to get all four of the maps. You're going to get the two new vehicles, the ZIKZ 605R, and of course this, the Con Sentinel, which you're seeing on screen right now. Um, but if you are not a Season Pass holder, there is free content for you as well, including trials and different customization elements, like, for example, these four new um, hood ornaments. Actually, I believe that there's five of them. So there's the four in the middle right there, and then there's another one down at the bottom, which is currently locked. All of these are currently locked, but once again, that is because they are trial rewards. And the thing about those trials is that the Phase 4 trials are properly difficult. They are very difficult, and they are trials that you are going to end up repeating over and over and over again until you get them done the way you want to get them done. And some of them are literally orchestrated around a premise that is difficult to begin with, Plus, you add cargo into the equation to make that trial even more difficult. And when you do that, yeah, those trials become uh, very, very, very tricky. Not even just tricky. I would say they're past the level of tricky. I would say they're, um, they're genuinely like near hard mode level difficulty. Now, at this point, I would really like to talk about where I believe SnowRunner is going and what we have been able to achieve in this game up to this point, but also really, again, looking ahead to the future. And I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below on where you guys think this game is going and where you would like to see it go in the second round or the second year of developer-supported content. Because that's the crazy part to think about as well, is the fact that we have now seen a full year of post-launch support for this game, and that's super exciting to me. Super, super exciting. Now, I would definitely love to see, from the developer's perspective, I would love to see them do a desert environment or a desert map or a desert region of some kind. I think it would be really cool to see, now that we've seen several different modders and map creators do it in a really, really cool way, I would love to see how the developers do it and how they intertwine it with the actual environment of the game. I think it would be a really, really cool environment to see them do, because you know that they would add all sorts of new gameplay elements in with a desert-based or sand-based environment, and I would love to see what they did in that respect. Now, I'm sure there are other people that would like to see new and different regions as well, but if there's anything that you would like to see the devs add to the game in a future year of content, make sure you leave all those suggestions and ideas in the comment section down below. Let's get a conversation going. If there's a truck that you think you would love to see from a vanilla vehicle perspective, throw it down there in the comments. If there is an environment that you would love to see from a vanilla perspective or a vanilla game perspective, throw that down in the comment section below once again, because I think at the end of the day, this game is one of those one of those games that is evolving so incredibly quickly and really just building upon the content that it already has so incredibly quickly that who knows where this game could be at this time in another year, right? Because think about how far this game has come in one year of content support. Just think how much further it could go with another year of content support. And also, I would like to say, in high range with the off-road box in the ZIKZ 605R, 
We're just blowing through this back trail. Most trucks would get stuck back here. This thing, nah, it just blows right through. Now, granted, we do have the support attachment on the back, so that does add a little bit of weight to help with traction. But once again, amazing performance out of this truck. This truck always surprises me when I drive it because, yes, it is big, yes, it is heavy, but the way it drives does not really leave you feeling like it's at all held back by its weight or its size. And definitely for, you know, a base game truck, I think it's really, really fun to drive. And I think it really does a great job of getting the job done and can genuinely be used as a heavy scout. And if scouting with heavy vehicles is your thing, I would definitely give this rig a go. The only thing I would definitely advise you to avoid is trying to fit it between, you know, small gaps of trees because that's a great way to get it stuck really 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 quick found that out the hard way when i was playing through uh one of the first phase four maps on the pts but you know what i mean that's one of those things that you just discover as you try to take new routes and different shortcuts and just kind of figure the maps out because there are some back routes you can take to sort of make certain journeys easier but those routes do come with their respective risks that you do have to keep in mind at all times otherwise you do risk either losing a truck losing your cargo or running out of fuel at a very, 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 very inopportune time where it would be really hard for another vehicle to get to you. Now, as we wrap up this video, I would like to say I am very, very excited for two brand new communities to join the world around this game, and those being the Steam player base as well as the Switch player base. I think it will really open this game up and open the audience up to a lot more, um, a lot more players. And I'm really always excited to see that you know that audience diversification among different platforms. I think it's really, really good that this game is going to be offered on so many different platforms. And I decided to end this video, of course, with the bridge jump and if you guys enjoyed let me know your thoughts in the comments below hit that like button if you did enjoy and if you're new around here make sure you subscribe and i will see you guys next time talk to y'all later